Hey everyone! I thought it'd be fun to show how to use Blender's node system to make textures. We'll organize our nodes into groups of color layers and mass, essentially emulating image editing software. Then by stacking enough layers, we'll create a texture to be used as eyes for our Marnie tutorial series. But you can apply this knowledge to make virtually any texture you can think of. We don't need this cube, so get out of here! Shift A, add a plane. I like to do everything in ortho view, so hit numpad 5. Hit numpad 1 to go into front view. Tab into edit mode. Select all and rotate by 90 degrees on the x-axis. Tab back into object mode. Move this up, expand this bottom window, and change it to the shader editor. Go into the material tab over here, and click new to create a new material. I think use nodes is enabled by default now, but if not, just click this little checkbox. When working with materials, I like to turn off Blender's default filmic color space grading thing. So go into the render properties tab, under color management, change the view transform to standard. This way the colors we use will be the actual colors that show up in the render. I'm going to start with the eye whites, which is essentially the eye background. Shift A, add input, texture coordinate node. Add a gradient texture node, and a converter color ramp. Connect these nodes up like so. The color ramp's color output gets connected to the base color input of the principal shader. We can see our color ramp being represented on this plane. You can move these color selectors, they're called stops, all over. And clicking this bar down here lets you change the color of each stop. Move the black stop all the way to 1, and the white stop to 0. Move this handle in to about here. Marnie's eyes go from white to a light gray. So click the black stop and then select the black bar. Choose D5, D5, D5 as the second color. Move both of the handles in towards the center. And that looks pretty good. Add a vector rotate node. Drop it on the connection between these two nodes. As we scroll the angle, our gradient seems to be rotating around this point. We want it to spin around the middle, so 0.5.5 is our desired center point, and the axis is Z. Now it spins how we want it to. Set the angle to negative 90. Generally my nodes are haphazard and untidy at best, but there's quite a few ways to keep everything organized and clean looking. Shift A, go under layout, and choose frame. Box select these two nodes, and drag them into the frame node. Now we can move this frame node around and everything stays together nicely. With the frame node selected, we can go into this side panel, which you can bring up with N, and rename it by typing something into the label field. You can resize frames by dragging on the sides, but with nodes inside the frame you can't resize in this way by default. You have to drag the nodes inside the group to resize it, which can be tricky if there's only one node. If you want to change this, go into the item tab and open up the properties drop down menu. Turning off shrink will let you change the size of the frame manually. We know our eye white texture is looking more or less how we want it, so we can disconnect it at this point if we want, and move it out of the way. Let's start to create the factor layer which will determine what part of our plane shows the eye whites and which part show the eye color. So we're basically going to create the iris shape. Shift select these two nodes and duplicate with Shift D. To remove a node from a frame, hit Alt P while selected on it. Switch the new gradient texture to spherical. Drop a mix RGB node onto this connection. Move our newer nodes over here, and connect the color output to the factor of this mix node. Search for a converter, vector math node. Shift right click drag to add a reroute node back here. Reposition and connect up this reroute node to our new node's top vector input. Duplicate this add node and connect everything up like this. We want our gradient stops to be black and white. Switch the interpolation to constant. We can now use the first vector math node to position the gradient on our plane. Looks like negative 0.5, negative 0.5 works to get it centered. If you're wondering where this gray color is coming from, it's the second color on the mix node. We're going to make a node group to connect to it later, but for now, choose a color which is easy to differentiate from the background. Add a frame node. Select and drop these four into the new frame. Name it iris shape or size or something. Switch the second add node to a multiply node. Set the x and y values to 1 to change it back to how it was. Anything over 1 will make it smaller, and anything between 1 and 0 will increase its size. 2-2 two, two is a good starting point. Maybe change the y to about 1.89, since her eyes aren't perfect circles. Let's make the gradient for the iris color. Select these four nodes and duplicate. Alt-P to disconnect them from the frame. Switch this connection, and delete the multiply node. Add a frame node and throw these new nodes in it. Name this frame something like iris color. I named mine pupil color, but I'm a rebel. 
Connect this up to the lower color input on the mix node. Shift drag here to add a reroute node and connect to the add node. I'm going to zero out the add node. Let's drag this slide around to figure out where our origin is at. Switch to linear. Change these stops to a green and a brown color. Pull the brown stop to about here and switch the interpolation to linear. If you want to set the colors up exactly like mine, select the green stop and click the plus sign. Select the brown stop and click the plus sign again. Select this new color field and adjust it. Add another color stop and change it as well. And move it over here. Make some room for more nodes. Select these two nodes and duplicate them. Unparent from the frame with Alt-P. Add a new frame node. Name it. I never know what to call anything, just, just name it something. Before we do anything, select these four, duplicate and unparent them. Alt-P, throw them in a frame. This will be the factor we use to blend the highlight into the rest of the color. Duplicate this mix node and drag it onto here. Connect the highlight up to the second color and connect the factor to the factor. Connect up these reroute nodes to the inputs of our new groups. Drag out this color ramp's white stop. Switch to linear and pull the black stop forward. Change the multiply settings to about 4 and 4. We're going to change its location slightly later, but we'll leave it here for now. Let's change the highlight's color. Select the second stop, choose a dark green. Position them about like this. And change the white color to a light green. Let's adjust the scaling on the factor node group. I think that looks pretty good. Now off-center it slightly. Hold shift while dragging to make smaller adjustments, or just type them in. Shift drag to add some reroute nodes to tidy things up. Select all these nodes except for the texture coordinate, the shader, and the output, and make a group with Ctrl G. You can hit tab to enter or exit a node group you're selected on. I missed grouping this reroute node, so I have three inputs. Hit Ctrl Alt G to ungroup, make sure this reroute node is selected, then make a node group again with Ctrl G and tab out. Now we're going to create the donut shape for the lighter part of the iris and drop it onto our existing texture. Add a mix node, drop it here. Move the color output of our node group to the second input on the mix node. Add a color ramp, connect it to the factor. Add a gradient and two vector math nodes. Switch the second to multiply, connect everything up. Switch the color ramp to constant. Flip the locations of these two color stops and change the gradient to spherical. Depending on your hardware, it might take a little bit of time for the texture to reload. When it does, we'll have a new circle overlaid over our texture. Make sure the multiply node is set to 1, 1. Move it to the center with the add node. Scale down with the multiply node. You can also use the color ramp to change the overall size of the shape. Adjust this multiply node to fine tune the shape. Move these new nodes out of the way. Now duplicate them. Put everything in frames to keep it tidy. Name our frames. I went with inner iris and pupil size. Shift drag to add a reroute node here, connect up. Duplicate this mix node and drop it here. Connect the colors up like this and switch the mode to lighten. This color is going to determine the color of this new circle. I switched it to white for now. If we flip the order of this color ramp stops, we cut a hole in our iris factor. We can fine tune the location and size of the shape with our math nodes. Select all these nodes and group them together with Ctrl G, tab out. Really all that's left is making a color for the lighter part of the iris, which is set to white for now. Add a vector math node. Duplicate it and switch the second one to multiply. Add a gradient and a color ramp. Connect everything. Make a reroute node. Change the gradient to spherical and connect up the color ramp to the first color input. Nothing is happening right now because our multiply node has squashed our gradient into oblivion. So let's switch the multiply to one and one for now. Now as we drag our stops around, we can see it affecting our eye color. Change the center point of our gradient to the center of the texture. Adjust the color ramp so that there's just a hint of black around the outer edge. Change the black color to a light blue-green color. Change the white color to a darker blue-green. Adjust the gradient. And adjust the math nodes. Slide this gradient up to about here. Add the all-important frame node. Name it whatever makes you happy. There's a few more details to add to this, so duplicate the mix node and put it here. We've broken our beautiful texture temporarily, but it's okay. 
Select these four nodes, duplicate and unparent them. Put these nodes in a frame as well. Change these colors back to black and white. Adjust the stop locations and set the multiply node to 4-4. Drag this factor slider back to zero to show our eye color again. Connect up this new series of nodes to the factor input. And this reroute node to the vector input here. Slide this down on the Y axis. Off-center it on the X axis a little. There's no need for anything too fancy here, just change the color to a lighter blue-green. Name our frame something wild, like Highlight Factor. Select these four nodes, duplicate and unparent them. Surprise, surprise, put them in a frame. Now move stuff around so we feel better about our layout. Select all of these nodes and group them with Ctrl G. Tab out. Select and tab into our new group. Connect up this reroute to the new node's input. Duplicate and drop this mix node here. Duplicate just these two nodes and keep them in this frame. Connect up like this. Then connect this top ramp to the factor here and the bottom ramp to the second color. We've created a bright sun looking thing. Adjust the size of the multiply node, which conveniently changes the size of the color and factor. This add node moves the location of both of these gradients as well. Put it over here somewhere. Move the top gradient closer together. Change the bottom gradient to constant. Adjust the second stop's location to make a narrow band of black. Change the black color to a light green blue. Name this frame to Sunlight Thing, because I have no idea what it's called. It's so beautiful. Tab out and condense our nodes. Now let's bake this to a texture that we can save and use on a 3D model. Add an image texture over here, don't do anything with it yet. Switch over to the image editor, click the new button up here in the menu, give it a name. You can also create new textures in the image menu. I didn't actually set the dimensions of my image the first time, so let's set the width and height to 128. And call it Eye Texture 2, I guess. Go back into the shader editor, click this little drop down menu on the image texture node, select the correct image. Don't connect it to anything, it's just solely here so that Blender knows what texture we want to bake our material to. Switch back to the image editor. Open up the bake menu in the render properties tab. Switch the bake type to diffuse, uncheck direct and indirect. Hit bake and wait for it to bake. Should be pretty fast. Make sure to save this in the image menu. So that's one eye's texture, let's quick change it to make the other eye. Select this top group and tab into it. We want to move this thing to the other side of the center. Find this negative 0.49 and change it to a negative 0.51. This will move the pupil over a bit. Tab out of this node group. Select the bottom node group and tab into it. Change the highlight factor location to negative 0.49. Tab out of this node group. Select and tab into the middle node group. Change the inner highlight factor from negative 0.49 to negative 0.51. And that's all it takes to switch to the other eye texture. We could make a separate texture for this eye, but I'm just going to bake over the old one. Switch to the image editor. Hit bake over here in the render properties tab. If yours failed like mine did, make sure to select the plane object in the 3D viewport and bake again. In the image menu, save as a different name from the first eye texture. And that's making a texture, specifically eyes, in Blender using nodes. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and that maybe you learned something. Please leave us a like or a comment. I love hearing from you guys. Stay safe. I love you all. Goodbye.